Hey, it's Sol, and today we're going to go over the gearing path in Season 4 of Dragonflight. Where do you go at Endgame? How far can you go when doing the activities that you're doing? There are some questions I won't be able to answer, like with the Awaken gear bought with Bullion, but by the end of this, you should have a good idea of how your behavior might change, but more or less probably stay the same. So if you don't mind, hit the like button, subscribe for more WoW coverage, and catch me live on Twitch. With another big item level jump this season, my advice for just about anyone and everyone is to take up every advantage for easy gear. Season 4 begins the week of August 23rd, and on the in-game calendar, it looks like it's a burning crusade time walking week. The gear that drops from there is adventurer level, and in this season, that's a starting item level of 467, and can be upgraded all the way to 489 with only Whelpling Crests. This makes the first week a massive shortcut for early gearing in the season for your alts or even your main. This isn't even mentioning the piece of 493 champion gear that you get for clearing 5 time walking dungeons. But let's say you won't be joining us for time walking fun time. Early gearing in season 4 is just like any other. You want to scrounge around for BOE greens and look at world quests to complete. Very important is to clear the new Last Hurrah weekly quests. What these do is take all the Dragonflight activities that we've been doing, and instead of a few pieces of veteran gear, we get a single piece of champion gear. Your path towards completing these weeklies is bound to also fill up your bags with explorer or maybe even adventurer gear. Outdoor endgame will mostly revolve around these weekly quests, and obtaining crafting sparks to update your gear to the new base item level of 486 before any enchanted crests. At the moment, the world boss loot tables haven't been updated, but I'm going to take a stab at it and say, yeah, they'll probably be back. They'll probably be on a rotation, like with the raids and activities, and we'll award champion gear. It's just a guess, but I'm pretty confident about it. If you're up for it, you can run normal dungeons for explorer gear. You can help yourself or your partner by running follower dungeons too. At this level, there are just lots of ways to start gearing yourself up to the roughly 480 level. Heroic dungeons are likely to be a much more active activity compared to earlier seasons. You'll need an item level of 441 to queue up. It shouldn't be a problem with a little bit of elbow grease though. From here, you're going to get adventurer gear and credit for the Great Vault towards veteran pieces. The difficulty is being retuned to be a little bit tougher than the heroics that you're running now, but I also want to give some reassurance that this is kind of Blizzard's way of catching up to the upgrade system that started in Season 2, which more than makes up for the item level difference. So in practice, we're going to sort of go back to that old, old feeling of grinding heroics for a while to get strong enough to take on higher level content like raids. Kind of reminds me of gearing during early Mist of Pandaria. I do suggest hanging out at this level until you're near an item level of 489 or whatever you think is comfortable before going into Mythic Zero Dungeons. Raid Finder item level requirements haven't been updated on the PTR, but if Season 3 is of any indication, it's likely to be item level 463 to get in. The totem pole of progression is changing, where before, Mythic Zero and Raid Finder difficulty used to be closer in line together. In the upcoming season, Mythic Zero dungeons are likely to define themselves as something that you progress into after gearing through the likes of Heroics, Raid Finder, Weekly, and Outdoor content. Fortunately, I just talked about a lot of different ways to gear up to this level. Exceptional players will of course blow past Mythic Zeros and into their preferred endgame very quickly, but this new version of Mythic Zero is trying to carve itself out to be a challenging endgame for beginners to check out, with tougher mobs and additional boss mechanics to deal with, but no timer or fixes to add additional pressure. Anyway, this is a gearing video, and my suggestion is to farm the heck out of Mythic Zeros for a while. While tougher than before, these are still like the one almost two year old dungeons with a handful of bosses that drop champion gear and make one eligible for hero gear in the vault. You'll also earn 10 drakes per clear to upgrade your champion or your veteran gear to an item level of 502. The weekly lockout for mythic dungeons remains in effect, so despite the criticism, there should be a fairly healthy population of players wanting to run every dungeon. Whether you fit that group leader's needs though, that's a... Uh... Well, that's a different topic altogether. The raid scene outside of gearing through like bullion and the awakened gear stuff, you know, the raids are familiar territory. We'll at least touch on the vendors a little bit later. Mythic Plus though is going through a few changes, notably a number squish, and this actually comes to really benefit those of us who are just looking for gear. Here we have the breakpoint, starting with plus twos that drop champion gear, worm crests, and give hero gear from the vault. And there's only one dungeon affix, of course, tyrannical or fortified. Plus 6 is where Aspect Crests will start dropping, but we're only dealing with two affixes still, unlike 3 in previous seasons. 
Plus sevens are where hero gear starts dropping at the end of dungeons, and plus eights make you eligible for myth level gear from the vault. And we still don't deal with that third affix until tens, when we're really starting to push. So it's clear that the path to powering up has fewer obstacles than ever before. For many players, sevens and eights are going to be the sweet spot, the place that we're going to live until we're done gearing our characters, and then it's off to you know, whatever we feel like doing. Now this isn't me saying that these level of keys is going to be easy peasy, but just one less layer of complexity that would come with the third affix. Awakened Gear is still a small mystery because the bullion currency linked to it is also a small mystery. I'm going to make some safe, some small assumptions and use that as a jumping off point for a few more tips. Odds are extremely good that obtaining bullion to buy awakened items won't ask you to do anything outside of what you typically do. We're probably going to get these from season activities and over weekly events as proven by the weekly dungeon event, while the current time walking quest on the PTR does not. Of course, this is subject to change. The same approach likely goes for upgrading Awakened Gear. Don't expect to be forced to go into, like, Plunderstorm to get any stronger. But as you earn this bullion and other stuff, you're going to make considerations as to what's going to give you the biggest bang for your buck. Those who obtain legendaries may go in that direction first, or having, I don't know, a raid full of grief torches firing off? Hey, maybe that sounds like fun. The changes are big, but the routine, not so much. Instead of turning things upside down, the lower item level band, I guess, is getting a little bit wider, with additional challenge and powerful gear to match. Meanwhile, max level gear from upgrades and the vault is arguably more accessible than it's ever been, while not really affecting the challenge that comes from mythic raids or higher keys. From the looks of it, bullion and awakened gear will speed this process even more rather than hinder or distract. So we're going to progress in a more natural order, from outdoor content and normals to heroics and mythic zeros, then your personal mix of raids, mythic plus, and other endgame as time allows. That's the guide, and while this isn't exactly a step-by-step -step instruction manual, hopefully you have a clearer picture of what's ahead. Please like the video, subscribe for more coverage, catch me live on Twitch, and I'll catch you later. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay breezy.